Great. So thank you very, very much for having us, and thanks to Hacker Nest for putting this all together. So um, the story about this app uh, that Dan and I built uh, starts about a month and a half ago, two months ago, when I first found out about this hackathon. So uh, I found out about it, and uh, what ended up happening was I was chatting, about, chatting with my dad about uh, dementia, and he's starting to worry that he's getting it. And uh, it, was a, it was a rather sobering conversation for me because he has a lot of friends that he are also worried that they're getting it. But proactively, they're kind of working together. And uh, they're trying to essentially take on healthier lifestyle choices such that they can essentially delay or stop any progression that is already taking place because they're all of sound mind. But this is something that really bothers them. Um, so when we started doing the research behind the app, we looked to essentially reduce the problem. So I looked at all the papers that were on the website, and uh, I kept seeing this common thread, right? It was that generally a lot of vascular dementia specifically, and now the line between Alzheimer's and vascular, the vascular dementia that's blurring a little bit, suggests that cerebral blood flow is very important. And there are certain things that essentially create really healthy blood flow. And these are things like social stimulation, or more exercise, or a healthy diet, right? And then what that's doing is essentially putting more oxygenated blood into your brain, which is going to essentially keep it healthy, but also clear out a lot of the stuff that gets left behind sometimes, which develops into plaques, and then therefore becomes lesions on your brain. Now, because you have good blood flow, you have a reduced chance of having dementia. But the problem is that this doesn't always happen. So when you don't have such, uh, pardon me, sorry. So the problem is that once you start getting dementia, it becomes harder to have a healthy diet. It becomes harder to exercise regularly, and it becomes harder to become socially stimulated. That's also the way that pa patients with dementia and cognitive impairment are treated, which then further reduces blood flow, right? And then by that definition, we get into this vicious cycle. And you reach a tipping point where it becomes hard for you to manage your own condition, but then also it keeps getting worse. So the idea behind this app is, in essence, to extend the amount of time that you have to have a healthy diet and develop good exercise habits and socially stimulate yourself in such a way that you are getting good, healthy blood flow in your brain. So the app, essentially, what we're trying to do is we're trying to stimulate blood flow. And uh, it's going to get a little technical for a second here, but um, when, you, when you stimulate your brain, there are these things called gamma waves. And gamma waves actually stimulate blood flow. So what we're going to do here is we're essentially going to try and create more blood flow to the brain by using something called binaural beats. Who's ever heard of binaural beats before? So a couple of people have. But I'm going to take a quick second to describe what they are. In essence, imagine you've got headphones on, and I put a sound at 50 in this ear, and a sound at 10 in this ear, the difference being 40. What happens is your brain interprets that 40, and specifically when it's 40 hertz, you get a lot more blood flow. So using sound, we can in essence create more blood flow and therefore reduce the probability you actually get dementia. Now this doesn't only work for people with the onset of dementia, it works for all of us. So such an app, should it exist, and it does now, we can actually, hopefully, slow the onset of dementia. So can you please go to the next slide? So here's a quick demo, and unfortunately we aren't able to, uh, we aren't able to actually play the song that's on the iPhone, but the judges, you all got a chance to hear, that um, in essence, it's a single tap. You select your favorite song on your playlist, very simple, and we, we received the feedback from Friday that said, you know, use very simple interfaces that are very intuitive. So, single tap, and then you click go. And then your favorite song is playing, and it's playing a customized extra note in that file, which is going to stimulate your brain. So you aren't changing your behavior. You're still listening to music, and you guys all had a chance to hear. It's not, it, you can hear it but it's not something that is actually very distracting. It's actually complementing the music in some way. At the same time, it's actually giving extra nutrition to your brain. So this is for something, this is for somebody like my dad that is kind of worried about that onset, 
but at the same time, he wants to have as much time as he possibly can to change his life so that he doesn't fall into that vicious cycle and progress through the stages of dementia. So uh, just a nice little tagline here. Imagine if your doctor prescribed you a playlist. It's a rather nice thought, but that's actually possible with what's working here. And uh, just to build on uh, what we were talking about here, um, we, we actually ran this by our, our friend who was a neuroscientist. Uh, he did his PhD in audio engineering, or sorry, audio, what, audio neuroscience, and uh, he validated it. He said, yes, the science checks out, and we're glad to share the sources with you. I'm lucky to be joined with, uh, I joined on this team with my buddy Dan here, who we've known each other for a long time, but he's an audio engineer. And he developed the interface, and we worked together on the algorithm and the actual uh, music that's injected. And if anybody wants to hear what it actually sounds like afterwards, feel free to come by and say hi. Very cool. Thanks for giving us the demo. Um, so I work in evidence-based medicine. So are you thinking that before you try to get kind of a, a wide-scale adoption by, let's say, a healthcare system, you need to kind of run some clinical studies to prove that blood flow in the brain actually increased? And do you have a sense of kind of what that involves? So yes, there's definitely a need to do a lot or a fair amount of research to prove that these actual beats are the ones that are coming out of the app that are actually working. Um, the research is quite, in, is quite heavy in supporting the fact that binaural beats generate gamma oscillations at all frequencies of binaural beats. However, the 40 number that I threw up there is a really good one. So if you can get a 40 beat binaural beat oscillation in your brain, it's like 100 times more oxygen to your hippocampus, which is where all of your memories are stored. So that is the reason why 40 is so valuable. The other important thing here is that um, the, the actual experience of it, you had a chance, right? It's, it's not like it, it's not really that distracting, but what we want to do is we want to test with people using it such that we can, yes, validate that it's actually working and even tune it to make it even better. So uh, some fMRIs or some kind of way of actually looking at the data that comes off of those devices. Do you think this will be like fluoride in our drinking water for everybody? Well, I think the jury's out on fluoride, but like think of it like uh, think of it like vitamins for your brain, and like you're just listening to music, but you're doing really really good things for your mind. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys.